Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to our session today. Uh, today is the 21st day of July 2020. We have a repeat session with the Nairobi Center for International Arbitration, and that is uh, with uh, Mr. Alex Moreki, who is a senior, senior case counsel. We are holding on for him to get onto the call. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, yes, please feel at home and thank you for joining us. God bless you.
Welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, to the call. We are happy to have you uh, on board. We are uh, awaiting for our speaker from the NCIA to join us. Uh, and like, once again, thank you for being with us on the call right now. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your uh, patience uh, as we are holding on for uh, Mr. Alex Mariki of the NCIA. He's not yet on the call, but we shall start off. And 
when he uh, comes onto the call, then he will be able to join us as we do proceed on them, as we uh, do at all our sessions. And that is a prayer for our nation and also a prayer of thanksgiving to God and uh, in his mercies as we advance on in other areas of our work. And also at the same time in us being able to develop the vocation that uh, we have uh, chosen, which is in the mediation vocation. So we say in Kiswahili, the first answer, E mungu ngugu yetu, ilete baraka kwetu, haki iwengao na mlinzi, na tukai na uhuru, amani na undugu, raha tupate na ustawi. I see that on the call today, we have uh, quite a number of uh, colleagues. I see that we have uh, William Agan, we have Timothy Dare, we have uh, Sarah, we have uh, uh, Sarah Ndwati, we have Samson Muchelule, Pauline Wahinya, Patricia Oketch, Margaret Gatia, Linda Mutanje, Edwin Apacha, Christina uh, Kenywa, and Reed uh, Kamunde, and also the other colleagues who are joining in. My name is Wangari Kabiru, and I am the convener of the Wasilena Hub Mediators, which is a community of mediators that is um, advancing the professional practice of uh, mediation and with uh, vision for Africa and uh, starting off uh, from Kenya. As a background on Wasiliana Hub, we started off uh, our vision in 2016 and kicked off the work uh, in Kenya in uh, the year 2018. We host uh, virtual platform which is an online listing uh, for mediators and that is uh, at on the uh, website which is uh, wasilianahubmediators.co.ke so if you're a professional mediators there is a basic service that allows you to list for free so that if anyone is looking for a mediator then they can be able to find you there or if you'd like to share with someone details about yourself as a mediator that is an, a virtual address that you can be able to send to them we have a pro mediator uh, service and also a pro uh, mediation practice uh, service uh, that is still available on the site and that is a subscription based that is available as you advance on uh, in your work. During this uh, season of uh, the COVID-19, we have been hosting virtual sessions and they are hosted through our asset, which is the Mediation Africa Forum. And that is um, how comes you have joined us uh, for this particular session. Um, yourselves. So that is who Wasilian Hub is in a nutshell. And as you engage with us, and I hope that you will keep engaging with us, you will get to learn more opportunities uh, that are there for mediators as we advance on in this work. As I indicated earlier, uh, Mr. Alex Moniki is not yet on the call. Uh, however, we will uh, kick off with a discussion as mediators focusing on the area of empanelment. Empanelment is one of the strategies that is used by uh, professions to be able to one, advance the profession, to provide it with status, and at the same time, to also be able to enable jobs to grow for the profession. So at this juncture, we are curious as to why you're interested in empanelment, and at the same time, we are also curious, are you on any other panel? And what mostly are you seeking out for when you do apply or you participate in any panel for, for mediation? This will be an open discussion uh, that you will um, have uh, uh, with each other. And then from there, we will be able to see how we advance on with this conversation. I'll kick off with that inquiry with uh, mediator Christina Kinyua. So the inquiry is why as a mediator are you interested in joining a mediation panel? That is if you are, because it could be that you just want to know, um, have the information. And so why are you interested? And if you're not interested, then also why? And what would you be seeking out from a mediation panel? And then you can also let us know if you're part of any uh, mediation panel. Medita Christina Kenyo, you may kindly kick us off. Thank you, Angari. Thank you so much for this uh, forum once again. And uh, if I'd like really to learn more and get to know more and learn for the exposure. Yes, my name is Medita Christina, and uh, part of it's about mediation. And um, the, one of the reasons why I would want to join a uh, panel, right now I'm not, 
but I would like to join one is to advance the scope of my practice. Uh, because you know, to to have a wider a wider area to learn more about mediation and how we can advance mediation together. Because uh, being uh, something that is not very very old, uh, let me use the word old in Kenya. There's a lot to learn. So we are learning from the international forums and even from each other. But uh, joining a, a panel uh, for me will assist or enable me to to be able to 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 expand my knowledge and also to learn more about the standards within the mediation uh, practice so that uh, I'm doing the best and of course according to the expectations of the practice. Uh, and well, let me uh, I can't remember the question that you asked. You know. So the question, um, you know, the question, yes, hi. The question that is there is okay. So why you would be interested to be on a mediation panel? In essence, mm -hmm. yes. What are you looking out for? And then, uh, are you on any uh, panel? Yes, that those are there, and you've uh, answered them well. Thank you very much. So, mediator Christina, you probably could invite um, another the next mediator to share with us, or the next person who's on the call to share with us, so that we can just have a roundup of uh, views. Uh, we are taking note of uh, these insights. Yes, kindly, mediator Christina, may I proceed on. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I can see Ma Margaret Garcia. Margaret Garcia, maybe you can uh, give us your your reason for the interest. And if you are in the panel of mediation, Mandrik, kindly come on. Welcome. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I I think mine is to I, I like uh, conflict resolution. I am happy when I I, I become as a disputer. Uh, when I help people to resolve their conflicts. And uh, I'm here and I'm interested to learn more so that I can enhance the practice as a mediator. And um, I think I also would like to interact more with others that are in the same practice so that I get to know what it is that they know that I don't know and better myself for the practice. Um, Currently, um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a mediator with, uh, with FIDA. I offer pro bono services for, me, for FIDA as and when I am engaged. So I'm here to learn and to interact with others who are of the same mind. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Margaret. Thank you, uh, she's interested in networking and also learning more. Uh, we have Timothy there. Timothy there, kindly. Unmute yourself, unmute yourself, Timothy. Then you speak. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Tim yes, yes, I'm... Uh... I'm a mediator uh, with uh, various panels. Uh, well, I'd be, I'd say I'm, I'd, I'd wish to join the NCIA panel uh, basically to enhance uh, my experience and interaction with uh, fellow mediators. Uh, it could be a forum to establish a network of professionals and also to better myself. Uh, as, as, as you know, once you're in a forum or once in a panel, they're bound to be a way of doing things. They're bound to be information flow. So that is what I'm looking out for. Basically, yes. Hello? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you see, we have different uh, reasons why we are, we are joining. Let's hear from... Uh, William again, William again, kindly unmute yourself and tell us. Yeah, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen. 
Good afternoon. I am probably feeling out of place because I'm not a mediator. I'm an advocate by profession, but I also have one leg in academia. Um, ironically, I have taught martial administration and alternative dispute resolution mechanisms for the past eight years or so, but I've never, uh, I've just seen students in my class come to my class at Catholic University of Eastern Africa and Riara University uh, building uh, my career in these areas. But I'm, I'm reading the signs of times and it is evident that uh, mediation and uh, arbitration has come of age. And so and when I realized that uh, the assistant registrar of Kipi, that is also a very close friend of mine, he was going to give us uh, something on, uh, on uh, mediation and trademarks, uh, trademarks, industrial designs and intellectual property, uh, in, in particular industrial property. Uh, so at the university, my dean realized that given that I have really been interested in this area and of late been trying to uh, to to get the trade as Kenyan chapter in the university uh, forwarded the zoom details to me and that's how I, I, I found myself uh, I found myself on that webinar and uh, yeah when there's an opportunity for me to jump into oh my goodness am I going to be a masquerader here uh, uh, so here I am, and I hope that we find myself in mediation and will be guided into it. I'm actually really interested. And ultimately, it would also be a wonderful thing to, to once uh, I've matured <laughs> uh, in the practice, and not the theory that I teach in class. Uh, be interested to be in the panel of the Nairobi International Arbitration Center. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, you're welcome. I, I am a trainer, and so uh, we can talk, and if you're interested, we see how we can assist you to train as a mediator. Uh, you really need not to be left of, of this, uh, this train. It's already hit the road. It's, it's, it's moving, it's on. So you're welcome. And uh, you. yes, yes. We will talk about the training. Currently, we are training the police all over the country. And we thank God for that because that will also assist them in many, many ways. Therefore, Karibu Sana. Uh, let's hear from somebody else. Asante, Aaron, you like it? Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Let's see from Sarah Duarte and unmute yourself. Sarah, I have interest. Hi, hi. Uh, my name is Sarah Duarte. I'm an advocate as well, but with little training in mediation from MTI. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in joining a panel because I'll be exposed to, how do I say, I'll get off my training shoes. I will interact with people who mediate daily and I will take off my training shoes and I will literally be in the practice. I think we have a severe lack of mentors in the process of mediation. And I think it would be nice to have that footing. And I think a panel would be useful for that. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you very much. A very important point. 
training and after training mentorship. There is actually a serious gap in mentorship as far as my vision is concerned. And uh, I'm glad someone has raised it up. Thanks so much, Sarah. Uh, let's hear from Lydia. Linda, sorry. Linda, you. Hi, everyone. I'm an advocate. I'm also a young mediator. I'm not in any panel, but the reason as to why I would want to be in a panel, I'll acquire more skills. I'll also get the network and I'll get exposed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Linda. Exposure is critical. Uh, very, very critical. As you know, not many people know about mediation. They really, you talk about this out here and people are like, what is that? And then you start telling them all about this from the, 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 the square one, you know? So, uh, Asante Rana Linda, I believe by the end of this session, uh, or by, by the time we send our applications, of course they come out, we will, we will, we will be empaneled by NCIA. Asante Sana. Edwin, kindly and miss yourself. Oh, Karibu, Karibu. Edwin? Hi, everybody. My name is Hi. Edwin Apacha. I am a mediator. I do both court annex mediation. The reason why I want, and I also serve in uh, one of the panels. The reason why I would want to join another one is you see mediation being a relatively new field in this region of the world. It's a learning, it's, it's a learning process through and through. So I believe by being in, the, in, in, in this other panel, I'll be able to expand my scope and also relate with peers and learn more. And of course, in the process also serving the community in terms of conflict resolution. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, I think you could be one of our mentors once we set up this, uh, this, this area of mentorship, now that you're doing cotton mediation. So I thank you, Sana. And uh, as you write this, yes. uh, life, life is, a, is a learning process. We are, learn, we are learning every day. So I thank you, Sana. Uh, thank you. Please come to see you. Let's hear from Colin Wahinia. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pauline. My name is Pauline Wahinya. I'm a mediator, but I'm not mm -hmm. in the panel. I mediate, I, 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 I offer myself for feeder issues of families, and uh, I'm accredited with the High Court. I'm waiting for the accreditation. I have already applied. And why I want to get into the panel, I really do not understand what, hap what happens in a panel. So that is my, my interest to know what the panels do. So that is my interest. And I would want to help the, the communities. After going through FIDA and seeing how the, 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 where, how it is difficult, the people are suffering in this country. They don't know how to resolve this field. I know there is a lot we can offer as mediators. And that's why I want to, to become a panelist and then to learn more with other professionals. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Colleen. And uh, as I'm saying, I can see the list of mentors is growing. The list is growing and we thank you for that. Uh, so we can also ask uh, Anred Kamonde to please tell us why you're interested in joining a panel of mediators. Anred, Anred, unmute yourself and speak. Okay. As uh, she comes on, let's have Esther talking to us. Esther, can you speak? And with yourself and speak. Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Esther Jenga. I'm an advocate as well, and I just recently finished uh, my mediation training, so I'm relatively new in this. 
Um, and I think for me, the reason for joining the panel is one to network with other professionals who have done this so for a while and uh, get mentorship from them. Um, and also just to uh, learn more around uh, moving, moving forward. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chloe. Uh, Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, yes, can you hear yes, me? We can hear. Yes, we can hear you. This is Andrew Kamunde. Yeah. I am a mediator accredited by the city, by the, the court. I have also uh, gone through FIDA programs and I love uh, doing, doing mediation. I'm also a counselor by profession. So I realize when uh, people have issues and I have my counseling background, I'm able to help uh, people in mediation more. I want to be in that panel because I want to learn more and also network and uh, develop, do development, knowing that uh, there's so much to be done in this nation. I think so far that is what I can say. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrew. Thank you very much. It's just okay. good to know that uh, the list uh, of mentors is still uh, getting longer. Yeah. Those, who are, those who are new uh, in mediation, like, uh, those who have just finished the training, uh, we shouldn't be able to link up and, and work with you. Um, thank you very much, everyone. I hope I've not left anyone out. Have I left anyone out? If you have not uh, given us your, your, your response, kindly unmute yourself and do so. Lauren? Hello. Hello. Yes, I'm, I'm uh, Florence Muia. I am an accredited mediator by the judiciary. Um, I'm also a professional counselor and uh, also a peace and a conflict um, specialist resolution. So I'm interested you know, to learn and also network with other professionals. Thank you. Thank you very much, Florence. Thank you so much, Florence. Asante Nitana, for everyone who has given us uh, your response. Uh, I believe everyone has given a response. And from what we are getting from each one of us is that uh, not many of us are in panel, uh, are in panel uh, as mediators. And we have young mediators, we have those who have just finished training, we have those who are from the legal background and those who are from other uh, background professions. I personally am um, from education background. Uh, having been a teacher for, for many years, and I actually resigned as a high school principal to do mediation. It, it, it tells that really this mediation is something we can uh, take and run uh, our own with. So we, we realized that from our responses that uh, we wish to be empaneled in order to network, in order to gain, uh, learn more about the standards in mediation. Hello, Christine. I thank you, Christine, for uh, driving us uh, in this uh, part of the uh, discussion. We were getting to understand who is in the room and also what is their interests uh, with regard to the area of uh, mediation. And also it has uh, provided us with the opportunity to have our uh, guests for today's session to settle in um, on the call. 
Uh, as uh, Christine was highlighting from the discussion that has uh, been uh, going on, it is very clear that uh, what mediators are actually looking out for is they're looking uh, for the opportunity to network. They are looking for the opportunity to be able to get opportunities to uh, serve, and that is uh, opportunities to be able to undertake mediation. They are also looking for opportunities for exposure. Uh, at the same time, mediators are looking for opportunities for uh, mentorship, and uh, that is actually a very big area in uh, the mediation space um, here in Kenya with regard to how people can get ment mentorship when they're either starting off or uh, whether they are uh, much uh, um, mature mediators or they are as young mediators, and also to be able to better themselves and also not to be an island, to actually be able to interact with others who are in the profession and with that hopefully be able to grow uh, together. So ladies and gentlemen, as um, highlighted today, we are delighted to have uh, Mr. Alex Moniki, who is a senior case counsel with uh, the Nairobi Center for International Arbitration. Uh, Mr. Alex Moniki will uh, let us know what, uh, what uh, the Nairobi Center for International Arbitration is, what it does, what is its mandate, and um, how it runs uh, as part of uh, his uh, introduction. This is the second session that we are hosting with the Nairobi Center for International Arbitration. Having hosted the first one on the 14th of July, 2020, and this is a second session so that in case you missed out or if there was something else that occurred to you that you'd like to be clarified for you, then Mr. Alex Moniki is available for us. This is part of our series on empanelment where we are looking uh, at how we can be able to enrich mediators through engagement in panels that enable them to be able to grow as professionals uh, in this particular field. So some of the questions that we received we have posted. Uh, yes, um, I was pointing out that um, we have uh, posted on the chat a couple of the questions that did come in advance. So Mr. Moneki will take us through his presentation. And in his presentation, he may respond to some of those inquiries as part of his discussion. And for those that he will not have uh, responded, we will be able to take them uh, uh, for response uh, after his presentation. So ladies and gentlemen, we request you to uh, uh, go walk through with us as uh, Mr. Moneki takes us through uh, his uh, presentation. And then um, after that, then we will be able to take any questions, we encourage you to put them on the group chat um, as we do go on. Alex Moneki, how are you today? And I'm welcome. very well, and Gary, how are you? We are delighted to have you. Yes, we are very well. I'm, I'm very glad that you did uh, come into the call when we were having the discussion with regard to why are we after you, or should I say, why are you after us uh, um, as mediators? And so I'm glad that you've heard uh, from, from our end uh, wh what is the interest uh, for, for mediators with regard to empanelment, and specifically at this juncture, what we have as a presentation to mediators is the Nairobi Center for International um, Arbitration. So Mr. Alex uh, Moniki, I would like to invite you, kindly do make an introduction of yourself um, as you officially are uh, introduced kindly give us a brief background on the Nairobi Center for International Arbitration. We would not like to take the presumption or as, uh, to have an assumption that uh, the mediators on the call are familiar with um, the organization and even if they are, there's much more you can share with us that can help us to understand that can help us to understand um, the organization uh, much better. And then you can be able now to advance on to tell us um, on the empanelment process with the Nairobi Center for International Arbitration uh, Mediators Panel. And we will be able to now come back to you with regard to any questions um, that are there. And thank you very much for joining us. I know it's been a, a long day for you and uh, it's a delight that you join us today. Karibu sana. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Wangari. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my good name is Alex. You. Thank you. My name is Alex Moniki. I am a senior case counsel at Nairobi Center for International Arbitration. I have been with the center for uh, three and a half, four years now, since early 2017. And um, I'm happy to have joined all of you today for these um, uh, series of um, webinars. Uh, what does the center do? The center is a, a state corporation uh, established by statute, which is the Nairobi Center for International Arbitration uh, Act. And I would invite all the mediators to have a look at, at the act, you know, what it is, um, you know, the functions of the center which are contained in uh, section five. And in a nutshell, basically the center exists to promote, facilitate and encourage um, the conduct of international commercial arbitration and other forms of ADR, mediation uh, being one of them, and to, of course, administer, not, not only promoting and facilitating, also administering, and uh, we develop rules encompassing conciliation and mediation processes. We organize international conferences and uh, seminars and training programs for arbitrators and scholars. You know, we coordinate in collaboration with other agencies um, and non-state actors, the formulation of national policies, laws, and plans of action uh, on ADR. And uh, there are quite a number of you know, functions. And I think I would, I would not miss to mention that we also uh, train and accredit mediators and, and arbitrators. That's part of our functions under Section 5 of the NCIA Act. Um, and one of the ways we do this accreditation is by panel listing. I could uh, had in the conversation from um, uh, earlier on when Members are talking about panelisting. Uh, some want to network. Some want to, you know, to learn more. And uh, panelisting, really, in a very, in very simple terms, is getting a, a list of qualified people. In this case, mediators, and they are put on a panel, and they are accessible for appointment by parties who come to the center, and uh, requesting for the services that we offer. As a center, we are employees of the center. We do not mediate, we do not arbitrate. We facilitate the process of mediation and arbitration. And one of the ways of this facilitation is by having qualified people come and take care of these processes or come and conduct the processes of mediation and arbitration. And uh, with your permission, I'll um, go straight into how is this uh, panelisting done. Uh, first process is an application process. You, and if I have permissions to share my screen, I'd be happy to share the application form for your for your information. I'm not sure if this is visible to to all. It is visible. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yes, all right. So the form it's a very basic, straightforward form. And uh, any monitor just looking at it will then just need to follow each and every instruction continue the form. And the first uh, bit of the form is where you affix a photo. We want to see who is this person who is uh, applying to be on the panel? You know, you know who do, how do they look like? And then one of, one of the things they require is that the people who then come to the tail end, or people who look at this application and approve, uh, want to know that this, they're, they're experts, both in mediation and arbitration, and they want to know is this someone that we know and we don't even need to look at other references. We, we can attest us as mediators and uh, practitioners of ADR. We know that this person is, is a mediator and trains and, and you may not know by just by looking at a name. So the photo is important. Um, so the first bit of the form is just a preamble, really just to say that you agree. If you are accredited to be a member of the NCI panel, to be bound by the terms and conditions applicable to NCI mediator panel status, and, and to any subsequent amendments now to those terms and, uh, and, and, and conditions. And you're required to fill all particulars in block letters. This is called handwriting. Uh, people who have very interesting handwritings and we struggle to get uh, very small details like email addresses and contacts. So you'd have a, you know, not a clearly you know, written form and you struggle to get in, in touch with the applicant. So we request, always request the applicants to use block letters or in a very clearly legible uh, way. So the form is applies to two panels. In total, we have four panels, yeah? The domestic uh, mediation panel, you have the international mediation panel. So two panels for mediation and two panels for arbitration. We realize they are 
mediators who also were another heart of an arbitrator. And we've had quite a number of them applying for both uh, the magician panels and the arbitrator uh, panels. When you're applying, then you, if you have any qualifications as an international mediator, then and you're keen on getting the international mediation panel, we then request you to tick the appropriate box of uh, the panel that you're interested in or the panel that you qualify to be in. And I'll come to qualifications uh, a bit later. So the next item on the, on the form is basically the particulars of, of the applicant. What are your names? Straightforward. And uh, your nationality, if you're Kenyan, and you request that you attach uh, a copy of an identity document or a, pass you know, or a passport. Whatever number that you feel, if it's an ID, we request for a copy. And if it's a passport, again, a copy of you know the face and the details, which you now indicate your you know your 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 nationality, and of course if you have multiple nationalities, again we all, always request you to attach this evidence, and this also comes handy when you have parties from other you know nationalities, they are coming from addition through NCIA, and they would want a national of of Libya, for instance, or you know of whichever country it is that they're coming from, and parties having the party autonomy to choose the mediator they would want then that comes in handy when you have um, an, an, international, an international mediation. All right, I think I scroll too fast. Okay, so after your uh, particulars, the next items are name of a farm, if you work in a farm, that's if applicable, then your mailing address, is the country, city, postal code, telephone, fax, email address, and your primary occupation. So this is basically, we want to know who is the applicant. And these are the details that we require when you're applying and you're indicating who it, who it is that you are and your contact details. The next bit of the form is on education. One, the minimum requirement for you to be on the NCI panel is that you must have, um, the minimum is a degree. And uh, we request that you attach, you know, whatever training that you, these academic qualifications, yeah? So, and the form just gives uh, a space for three. You able to, you can add more than, you know, just this. And we always request that you attach uh, the evidence. You say you have a degree, and it's in any field. These, the, the minimum degree is in, from, uh, on any field, but from an, um, you know, of course, a, a proper institution, a institution that is known and, and, uh, uh, yes. So after the academic qualification, the next bit uh, is on your mediation training. Again, a, a very key uh, qualification that for you to be on the panel, then you must then attach proof that you have been trained as a mediator. And now you want to come into the panel because you want to practice um, all that which you've been trained uh, to do. So, and of course, if you have been involved in, in such training as a, you know, you know, as a facilitator, trainer, instructor, it's always important to give that, the description of, of your role in that uh, training. So we've moved from academic training, we've moved from addition training, and I'll really uh, beseech you to look at all the places where it says attach proof. So that when you send us your, applic your application, then we don't have to go back to you and request you, you, you indicated you have a degree in philosophy, but you did not attach a copy of a certificate to prove that which you have indicated. Um, so the next bit, of course, then is a mediation experience. We basically want to know what experience do you have as a mediator? Uh, do you, have you been a sole mediator, a co-mediator, a counsel, or an agent in a mediation? So this is a wholesome look at the experience of the applicant. And in this case, we have um, divided into four different categories of your experience in commercial, construction, investor set, other. What we've all realized is that sometimes you may have a lot of experience on family matters or matters that are not part of what, what it is that we've indicated in the form. And what we encourage applicants to do is you, as a, and as you go lower, you will see a place where you're supposed to attach your resume. If you have a, a profile, uh, a profile as a mediator, and we always encourage mediators to have profiles, you're speaking into your mediation experience. So you could then say under section three or part three of the form, that you've attached uh, you know, an, a brief resume or a brief profile which speaks to your mediation experience. If, you're, if you do not fit into these uh, four categories that we have uh, indicated in the form, though other again may also be li very limited, 
So you're able to attach your a brief resume speaking into your medician experience. The fourth part of the form is do we want, oh, there you go. Actually, it's just part B. I need to move, oh, there, okay. Oh yeah, so the other bit of the form, the part B of experience, is we want to know a, an outline, a brief you know, outline or profile of disputes that you have handled as a mediator. Here, of course, we don't want, want to sh you to share the names or details of parties who are before you, but you then see the type of dispute was, it is a breach of contract, it was a you know, issue of um, you know, a, fa a family matter, you know, what were the issues, in a very general, broad manner, without going to any specifics. The person looking at your application form should not put a name to that which you have indicated that you handled. So it should be very dis uh, discreet. You have to, of course, protect the confidentiality of the parties uh, when you're disclosing this information. And um, so it's the type of dispute. You have handled a mediation that was a breach of contract. These were the issues. What was the dispute value? What was the nature of evidence and the duration of dispute? The NCIA uh, rules or uh, processes require that a mediation should take a maximum of uh, 90 days. That's three months. That's on the highest, highest, highest side. So we want to know what is your turnover time in in uh, in resolving these you know disputes, in having the parties then sit down and get a, um, a settlement agreement. It should not take more than 90 days. And those are what we always teach our and tell our mediators that once you're on the panel and you get a mediation um, matter to handle, then you have a, a, a timeline in which you're supposed to have concluded, unless of course there are other exceptional circumstances which will be dealt with on a um, case-to-case -case basis. So after you've indicated that information, the C bit is the number of years you've acted as a mediator. And here again, if you look at what is underneath C is you attach a brief resume or a CV or a profile, which then again speaks into your mediation experience. Now you are certified, accredited mediator, or listed in a panel of any other arbitral mediation institution, yes or no. And this again, if you are listed, it becomes easier for you to be on our panel. And I'm sure most of the people who have, uh, who are perhaps here today, are members of the you know, judiciary uh, and or any other institution. So even FIDA as well, because those are those are bodies that use your services, and that in essence is panelisting just from in a different institution in a different way. So, and again, we'd also want to know if uh, Madison is primarily your full-time practice. I did hear one of the members indicate that she was, uh, she quit her teaching job to, to do mediation. So if it's your full-time practice, again, this works uh, to, you know, in your favor, in that they would want someone who has even said and committed that mediation is there, is a full-time practice. So the other information that you're, supposed to give us a mediator is outlining any other relevant experience which is not in the form in which you feel supports your application including whether your mediation experience involves dispute of international character and you again the big part of that is what are your preferred areas of practice as a mediator we've, we've had mediators who would say they were actually just keen on commercial mediation because they say they have so much experience on commercial mediation and that, that is their preferred area of practice. So when a matter comes to the center and it's commercial in nature, then you know we have a list of people on our panel who have a certain preference. And they're also, again, those who say any. You are not limiting yourself to, to, to just uh, family issues, construction issues, um, you know, commercial issues. You're basically open to any, uh, you know, area. Okay, so the last bit of the form is a declaration. We request uh, the members to, or the applicants rather, to, to sign the declaration. And it's a very standard, simple declaration. And you're basically saying that you understand the center does not provide employment for any mediator. It's also, you also understand that the decision to nominate or appoint a mediator or mediators to any mediation referred to the center is within the exclusive discretion of the NCIA. And of course, you indicate I, the name of the applicant. You hereby declare that that information that you provided to us in this form is complete and accurate. And you understand, of course, that a first member may disqualify uh, an application uh, to the center. The last bit of the form, 
So if, of course, you're supposed to sign. A very important uh, aspect here is that we require applicants to attach to the application a recommendation by two referees. These are people who attest to your mediation experience. And uh, even the people here in this in this forum, I'm sure you you know one, two, or three other mediators. Those are your, your references. You're saying that I know uh, Edwin Apacha, and I I have every confidence in his ability to mediate or in his experience. You can also have people or institutions that you have mediated uh, for before. We've had so many references from FIDA, uh, from um, the Mediation Training Institute. And uh, these are, they are saying that I do know so and so, and I attest to their uh, experience. Then we require the person who has recommended you to attach a, a notarized or certified copy of their ID. Uh, and this, this is a must because it emanated from um, the recommendations we would receive. And when we do a background check, the person who is said to have you know, done this recommendation is not familiar with it. So an applicant would write a recommendation letter, put an, a name of a, a known you know, mediator in this town down there and sign, which again is fraud. So we indicated that whenever an, applic an application comes and a reference is done, we then require the person who has recommended to attach uh, a certified or notarized you know, copy of their ID. We just basically want the front page with their name and details. All right. So the last bit of the form is uh, an undertaking that you agree you've accredited uh, to the NCM the panel to be bound by the terms and conditions applicable to the panel and to comply with the, the panel CETA standard, the NCI code of conduct for mediators and the NCI uh, mediation rules, the 2015 or any amendments thereafter. And pretty much that's the end of uh, the application form. So if you have filled this and you've attached your, your all the documents that I've, we've talked about today, then your application should be uh, complete in terms of documentation. The last thing which you then have to before you submit your application is to pay an application fee of, um, in fact, let me just pull that up. I should have, uh... oh, there you go. Yes, uh, try to zoom this a bit. All right, I'm, I'm sure you hope this is clear. You can see this. So the, the application fees uh, for domestic panel for any East African uh, applicant is 2000 and for, to the, for the international panel is 100 USD. Uh, this is payable once, right? And for any uh, East African applying for the domestic panel, or other non-East Africans applying for domestic panel, they pay 10,000 Kenya shillings. The, the after this, and this is only amount that accompanies your application, All right? So if you if you have you're qualified to be a domestic mediator uh, because you've been trained and you have experience in domestic mediation, and you want to be on the NCI panel, you pay the application fees of 2,000. Um, after. And I will talk, talk briefly about what happens when you receive uh, the application. That's when you have to pay the registration fee and the annual fees. The registration fee again is payable once and you get a certificate and that basically tells you you're now on the panel. You register to be on the panel. And I think these issues of fees, registration, annual fees is applicable to all uh, uh, professional, I mean, if you're, for instance, Charad Institute, uh, the lawyers who are here and they're in LSK, you know, there's that annual fee you have to pay to keep practicing uh, in that, you know, in that uh, profession. So the annual fee, I mean, ideally, is we're telling you, okay, we're not giving you work. You now need to to sustain your you being on the um, on, on the panel. So the only amount that accompanies your form is the application fee, two thousand if you're applying for domestic panel, and hundred USD if you're applying for international panel. And what is contained down here is uh, we do not take cash at the center. We want you to attach a slip 
and those are basically the, the account details, the NCI bank details. So the bank name is there, the center, I mean, the account name, the account number, the SWIFT code, and, and of course, if you're paying Kenya shillings, the Kenya shilling account is there, and you're paying USD, the USD account is there. So once your form is complete, and you've attached all the documents and things we've talked about, the last thing then you attach is a, is a slip, the slip saying that you've paid your application fee. Once we receive the, the application, the secretary here will process it just to check for you know, correctness and completeness of the application. And once that is done, it's forwarded to um, an accreditation committee. This is a committee of the board. And you go to our website, you're able to see who are our board members. So it's a committee of that board that looks into this application. And once they are approved, we all, always write back to the applicant and uh, inform them that your application has been approved uh, or has been deferred, and we always give reasons. The practice, basically, we, we never, initially never used to give reasons. You just, uh, if an application is complete, we write to you and inform you that uh, it's been, you know, it's not been approved. So we always give reasons. And the, the reasons which uh, have been, you know, recalling in the, in the, in the, in the, in the recent past is um, so you, did not, you, you basically did not attach, you know, uh, key documents. And, and even after we requested for, you know, for those documents before submitting to, 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 the, you know, to the board. And we've had instances where you have a nice application, it's complete, but the person never said they are trained, let's say by MTI or any other body that trains uh, mediators. But then you don't attach your, your certificate showing that you've been trained or you did not attach, um, you know, certain key documents that we talked about. So ideally, we would write them to you and inform you that your application was considered and was de deferred for lack of the item is one, two, and three. And if you're able to get those things that we do, the reason, I mean, that the center deferred the application for, you can still reapply, but you're not be, you're required to pay application fee again. I hope that's clear. Yeah, so that, that basically is uh, the application uh, process. The form is pretty straightforward. I, don't, I would not uh, see any challenges in mediators, you know, completing the form. And um, so once that is done and you pay the decision fee after your approval to be on the panel, we then, uh, you, you put on a, on a panel where when parties come, a petition has been filed at the center, the parties are the ones who choose. I'm sure you're all aware that about this party autonomy. And they have a certain number of days that they're required to choose uh, a mediator. And if they don't, then the center appoints. So the parties, we give parties a couple of days, and these are the list of mediators. You pick whoever it is that you please. And if they don't, or if they have difficulties, again, sometimes when people are coming for mediation, these are people in, uh, already in a conflict. So I, on one side, will choose uh, Wangare, and on the other side, the other person uh, chooses uh, Christina. Uh, obviously, then we, will not, we don't have those two mediators. With, and since they're in a disagreement from the word go, then the center chooses. And what, what we've done is from our panel that is currently in place, you not find the center giving one person more than one case if there are other people on the panel who also require a chance to, 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 to get their cases. So the only time we have a mediator or an arbitrator with more than one file or two files is because the parties chose them. And we cannot tell the parties not to choose a particular a mediator or arbitrator. So I think I'll uh, stop there for now, and I'm, I'm happy to uh, take any questions before we go to the questions that uh, had been shared earlier by Wangari. Uh, thank you very much, um, Alex. Uh, uh, allow me to look into the chat and uh, see uh, what we have as a, a, an inquiry. Uh, I see that, uh, okay, uh, when, and also any comments that were there. Uh, okay, yes, uh, uh, Edwin Apache is looking forward to all the queries uh, being responded. Uh, there's a request for a link on where to be able to access the application form that should be on the NCA website, and you'll kindly post it here, uh, um, Alex. And then okay. also uh, the, there is a question uh, uh, that is on clarify on the nature of evidence. This is uh, probably what you have explained with regards to how someone can be able to show that they have 
uh, uh, been uh, practicing as a mediator, you probably can just uh, give, go back again on that quickly. Then we have a question from Sarah Andwati. Um, a quick question or suggestion, can the NCIA move to online applications uh, through a portal? This would be more efficient, not only for the center, but for mediators um, and who are not based in Nairobi and also that the world is going paperless. So you can also comment on that. Uh, that is also available on the, NCI, uh, on the NCI site. And you can let us know if uh, at this juncture we make the paper applications uh, or we uh, can also use the uh, virtual, the online platform that is on, on your portal. Uh, Florence Muya has an inquiry for your very specific clarification on what is the annual subscription fee. So if you could, could kindly just run us through um, again on the, 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 the fee that is required of us. Uh, in this particular segment, uh, 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 I would request um, uh, Mr. Alex Moneki, we, would, we are looking at how mediators can be able to do applications by or on Friday, 31st July uh, this, uh, this, uh, this year uh, in 2020. So what does someone need to bring with them or what is required to show up at uh, your doorstep uh, in, your, in, your, in your organization? Uh, is it uh, the, uh, down, I, I go download the application form on the uh, NCI website, I print it out, I fill it out uh, in capital letters, as you've said, I uh, do the banking uh, based on the bank uh, details that you have uh, provided, and then now attach that, put it in an envelope, do I need to do a cover letter on it? So can you just run us through that specific part of what would you like us to do at this point? Um, the other inquiry that is there is how much is a payment per concluded case? Uh, in this, I probably would expand it and ask uh, how much is the payment with a, when someone handles a case? Is it tied to um, a mediation agreement or not necessarily tied to a mediation agreement? And how does that go? Then uh, there's also an inquiry, can someone apply for both the domestic and the international panel? And uh, you mentioned that uh, there is um, the panel for mediation and also the panel for arbitration. So can someone apply for all the four and does it mean that they uh, apply four times? How does that go? We have an inquiry also in terms of or with regard to where are, is NCIA located. So kindly, you could uh, take us through those inquiries. Thank you, Alex. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Angari. And I'll start with the last question, yeah? Where is NCIA located? So NCIA is, a, is, is in the CBD. Cooperative Bank House, I'm sure most of you may know it as a bell bottom. That, you know, the house, the Cooperative Bank House at Hillslassie Avenue, the junction of Hillslassie Avenue and Moy Avenue. We are on the seventh and the eighth floor. And I would invite uh, mediators once we normalize now going to people's offices and we, and COVID is behind us, to just come and have a look at our facilities. We do have um, custom made rooms for mediation, complete with caucus rooms on either side. So that when you are doing a mediation and you need to have caucus with the parties, they have two separate rooms uh, to do the caucus. So I'll be ha happy to come here at the center uh, whenever we you know, return to normalcy of physical, physical meetings. Uh, annual fees, and there's a question on the nature of evidence, uh, which is in the form. And I'll uh, basically just, there's an asterisk, the nature of evidence, the asterisk is right here. We basically want to know the mediation that you handled. Was it documentary? Was it oral? Were there witnesses? It's basically just to have a, a, a better understanding of your experience. So the nature of evidence, what we to mean is basically we want you to say, was it documentary? Was it just oral parties came and you know just made their submissions and and or are there witnesses to kind of just have a full picture of, of, of your experience. Annual fees, uh, I'll go back to the fee tab again. So we've said the only thing that accompanies your application is uh, the application fees. And it's of 2,000 Kenya shillings for domestic and 100 USD for the international uh, mediator panel. Once your application has been approved, and you're now uh, it's been approved for panel listing, you, that's the next step is paying the registration fees. This again is payable once. You register, we give you a certificate, which you now, tells you now you're on the uh, NCIA panel. And every year, you then be required to pay annual fees. Usually, two and three are paid together because you've been, 
you've been uh, accredited, you're now on the panel, you pay registration fee and the annual fees. And now that we're in half year, we're going, by the time you're getting back to you, will probably be in August, which is next month. We would then, if you pay the annual fee, the annual, since it's towards the end of the year, this annual fee will be accredited to the next financial year. And we put that in writing, that is very clear. So when, you're, when we're informing you that your application has gone through, uh, we'll then request you to pay the decision fees of this amount and an annual fee of this amount. And we'll tell you that the annual fee will be accredited in the year commencing 2021. I mean, we are basically towards the end of the year. There will be then no point for you to pay the, this annual fee when it's at the tail end of, 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 of the year. So these will always inform you in writing uh, before you make the payment so that you know if you're making a payment towards the end of the year, it's be then accredited to the next the next year. And then the next perhaps invoice you'll see from us will be the beginning of 2022. Okay, I hope that's clear. The, uh, the renewal fee, this is after four years, we want to have a, you know, we, sometimes you have instances where people on a panel and then you're not active at all, we give you we call you for matters, but you do not, you know, you're, you have no time you're busy, so we want to make sure that people on a panel are, uh, you know, active and they are, you know, available for when called upon to take up uh, some of these cases. Because at the end of the day, the center is looking at promoting and facilitating and encouraging the use of ADR, uh, mediation being uh, a core in, the, in, that, in, the, in that aspect. Wangari, someone asked about the online applications. We do have um, an online application process. There are two ways of doing it. We have had challenges, especially with the senior members of the society. They are, they, they've been telling, no, no, fine, we understand, but can I get the form and fill it? And of course, now we're going paperless. So what we advise them to do, if they're not able to go maneuver through the website and create an account and uh, do the application, you, you can actually download this form, fill it together with all your attachments. You don't have to physically come to, the, to NCIA with your application. Uh, you know, in hard copy, no, no, no. You could just complete as long as you've attached all the documentation, you just can. And you then send us an advance, I mean, a copy on email. And that, that should suffice as long as whatever you scan is very clear for the members uh, who sit in this committee to look at. So there are ways of, so you can either go through the website when you have an inbuilt form, you just type in your details as you go down and we'll be able to receive that application and we always acknowledge receipt. So if you send an application to us, and then you see no communication from us, uh, meaning uh, we either didn't receive it, because we always, as a matter of practice, acknowledge receipt so that you know, I sent, I scanned my application, I sent it to Alex at NCIA, and you have an email uh, acknowledgement of receipt. And again, it's, I find it tidier and neater because it's on record. I sent my application, it was received on this day, I've been waiting and not, there's been no communication from the center what's going on. So we tried as much as possible to, to make sure that the applicants are briefed on the, the, rather on, the, on, on the status of the application. We don't require a cover letter. The cover letter is actually the first, docu the first thing we're looking at in this application is the form with your nice photo at the, at the top, all right? So no, just fill the form, attach all the documentation that is required, attach the slip of payment of proof of payment we've actually had people uh, just pay by mpesa it's 2000 bob you have it on mpesa our account details are there and you you print out that mpesa statement from your phone and it's part of the, your documents so once we get uh, the application we will print it from our side and file it because uh, we always like to keep hard copy files for audit purposes in future uh, so payment for cases um, for mediators, there's a question of how, how much does a mediator earn? And I would uh, invite the participants to look at our mediation rules. Our mediation rules, second schedule on fees. Um, let me see if I'm able to, to share that with you. I should be... Let's see. All right, so um, even, even, even as you're applying to come to the center, I want you to familiarize yourself with our rules. 
because again that's what guides how you conduct mediation at uh, at, at at the center there you go i'm sure i'm not sure whether this is you're able to see this on your screen the mediator fee is here uh, if you're doing a domestic mediation it's a sum of kenya shillings 5000 for any time spent in mediation below and up to one hour all right and a sum of kenya shillings 15000 per mediation session an mediation session is equivalent to time spent in mediation above one hour and not exceeding three hours and then goes further it's actually very detailed it goes further to say uh, a sum of kenya shillings 1000 per hour for review of documents and related works and there's a note that the sum to be charged on mediator fee for time spent in mediation above three hours in a day shall be on a prorata hourly basis at the rate of 5,000 shillings per hour. So if you look at the rules, they, it's indicated how much are you going to earn as a mediator doing mediation under the NCIA. Okay. And uh, this is basically in our rules, but sometimes you find you have a complex mediation and you can have your uh, own engagement or arrangement with the parties, but the center would want obviously to know why you're departing from from that is which is in our rules. We're trying to make it cheap also for the for the for, you know, for the people who come for our services. So they're also affordable um, compared to uh, going to the courts. And international mediation, it's the same uh, same thing. Sum of USD three three hundred for any time spent in mediation below and up to one hour. Then a sum of sixty per session mediation session. And then some of uh, 300 per hour for review of documents and related works and the notes, which again applies to what we have just read up there on the domestic mediation. So if you have a look at our rules, you will be able to see these and more, which will be answer these some of these questions in greater, finer detail. So uh, can you apply for all the panels? Yes. If you look at the form again that I will quickly share. So we, we only have two, two forms at the center, but we have four panels. The four panels is domestic mediator panel, uh, international mediator panel. Um, sorry. So, so we have uh, two panels. One is an arbitrator panel. The next, the other one is a, a medi medi mediator and arbitrator panel. And for, in each of those, we have then domestic and international. We have uh, people who uh, tick all four. They want to be both a domestic mediator, international mediator panel, and since they also qualified and they train and, and they practice arbitration, they also want to be on the arbitration panel. So you will just have two forms ticked on both, and of course attach qualifications because if you have international mediation, but the qualification is more or less the same. The difference now comes in in the experience. All right, you're saying in my experience, I have actually done international mediation. And therefore, I want to be on the international mediation panel. So you can actually tick um, uh, tick uh, bo both of those. Wangari, is there a question that I've missed from the ones you spoke about? Wangari? Yes, uh, I'm with you. Uh, right. For from the ones that yes we have uh, we had been given, you've been able to cover them. I I see the recurring with regard to what is a fee, uh, how much is the annual fee, subscription fee, uh, and uh, from what you have explained is that at present because the the, the part of the uh, driver with these discussions is so that we can enable the mediators who are interested to join the panel to first be able to make the application. So there is the application form, which is available on the uh, NCIA website. That is ncia.or.ke. And complete that. Attach your photo and attach uh, the proof of payment. And that can be, that is what I should be submitted to the NCIA uh, offices. Then once you're approved, if you are signing up, depending on which one that you're signing up for, if it's a domestic panel, then there's an annual fee. Uh, which you pay, and that is provided in the details, uh, which um, uh, are on, also on the NCA website. And uh, Mr. Alex will also share with us uh, these uh, links so that we can share them into the uh, mediator's uh, WhatsApp group, and you can be able to uh, pick up uh, from there. So, um, Alex, I'd like to uh, that uh, we, you and I, can be able to run through the the inquiries that came in. 
uh, the inquiries that came in uh, from mediators, just so that we can see if we have uh, been able to cover uh, every area and if there's an area we have not uh, either been able to cover or you, uh, you see that uh, we could have greater clarity on it, you could uh, be able to um, touch on it and we can uh, uh, be able to have, let me say, like greater enlightenment in this uh, particular process. Uh, mediators, it is if, if, if there's something that's not clear for you or you'd like to uh, get in touch with NCIA um, after this, please remember and feel free that you can actually do that. So part one was um, a summary uh, of, uh, of the common questions we received uh, from mediators. And uh, the first one was what qualification is required to be enlisted in the NCIA panel? Um, so what I heard from you is that uh, there are someone you require a, a, a degree that is a university a, a degree uh, that is recognized as uh, the, uh, let me say, bare minimum um, application. I have a very specific inquiry with regard to this. Uh, dip, is, is, is a diploma or a certificate with years of experience, and that is years of experience whether in this work or in any other profession, is that uh, recognized, can someone apply for specific recognition, even if they do not hold uh, the degree, but they do have years of experience uh, either in this work or in other fields. Alex, kindly. All right, uh, thank you, Angari. Yes, uh, we've, we've had instances where someone has a, has a diploma, in fact, they had two or three diplomas here, yeah? and, uh, but the medicine experience was, 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 was top notch. And the committee, I mean, committee again is composed of uh, very reasonable people, and they look at each application uh, in its own. It's not just a, a you know a blanket application in the sense of you don't have a degree, yours is out. And we also know, um, and especially this has we've noticed this in the older, in the generation, our senior members of the society, some of whom may not have had a degree at the time they started, you know, this practice or their profession. Um, but they have uh, some, some diploma and certificates that they have acquired along the way. But the medition experience then overlooks that small detail of having a degree uh, as, as, a, as, a, as a requirement. And again also, the people who are approving these applications are people who uh, practice in this IDR field. So they are likely to know, I know so and so, and um, I know uh, uh, they, they are on another panel as well. I know they are the, the judiciary, uh, you know, but they do practice their mediation in the, the judiciary and they have a very solid profile that speaks into their, uh, into their experience. And on a case to case basis, you will find that they have actually been approved for, you know, for panelisting. You could have again someone who has so many you know, uh, degrees or papers but absolutely no experience in, uh, in, in, in mediation. So which again, the difficulty there comes in that we want people on our panel because we want our services to be at a certain level on the bare minimum. We want someone with some form of experience. And a question that keeps recurring uh, Wangari is the issue of I've just been trained. I have my certificate from say MTI as an example. But I'm a young uh, mediator now, I have no experience, where do I begin? Or where do I even get this first experience? For me then to be on panels, if panels are asking that you must have some sort of experience in mediation. And what we've uh, been working on for the last couple, in fact, COVID uh, affected some of this, was a, a mentorship program for people who have, you know, they're professionals in, their, in, their, in any other field. They've now gained interest in mediation. They have been trained uh, uh, by the bodies that are accredited to train, and now they want to practice. So what we do, we want them to be, to, you know, it's like uh, hand holding. We have the senior mediators on the panel, then engage and uh, these new, newly trained mediators, so that you say I've done mediation. And of course, again, knowing the nature of a mediation and the confidentiality, you don't want to have a mediator there with. Uh, with another person who is also, you know, who is not part of these, uh, towards, you know, just tying those confidentiality issues around the the mentorship uh, program, so that once it's out, we are then able to get the people who've just been trained. They're put in a program for, you know, x number of cases, and once that is, uh, they've gone through it, we then are satisfied to give them the first case to handle on their own. And from there, of course, then the experience uh, grows. So I think that's 
what I have to say about that, Wangari. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for that uh, uh, clarification, Alex, with yeah. regard to uh, the yes, with regard to with regard to that question, and that's basically with regard to the qualifications. Uh, I do yes. recall that there was the also the element of um, being able to apply based on experience. So this is what you've just talked about, uh, and these uh, people who may not even have had the required uh, education uh, uh, that is or the education level that uh, uh, NCA had uh, has indicated as the official. Okay, thank you for that. Then uh, right. we have an inquiry, does NCIA offer advanced uh, mediation training? I will hold that question so that we can take it to part B because part B had, had questions that focus on training. On, uh, uh, training. Yes, so right. that is, uh, and then the next question is where do I get the registration form from, Alex? So All what right. is there, if you can kindly, you, can, you kindly type in on the chat um, and uh, that, sh that should be the, the NCIA website, that is ncia.or.ke. That's Correct. where the website is. Okay, fact, so you kindly give the link. So I'll, 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 I'll share the link shortly on the chat. In Thank fact, you. I'll, share the, Thank you. I'll take you directly to where the form is. Okay, great. Thank you very yeah, much. So, so um, you're able, from, from the link, sorry, Ongari. So from yes. the link on the website, you're able to either, if you want to just type in your details in, in, in the website, that is possible. You want to download the form, fill it and resend it to us. Again, that's an option. It basically, you choose whichever works easiest uh, for you. But I'll just type it uh, right away so that you have um, you you have it on the on the chat. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next uh, question that had come in was, uh, what are the requirements for the local and the international panel? And that you have taken us through as you are doing the uh, the main presentation. Uh, then uh, the next inquiry was, uh, uh, how much does NCIA pay to the mediators for mediation session? You have also clarified that, and we will request uh, that uh, the, the, the document you're making a reference uh, to, which is also the NCIA website, you could kindly also include it uh, as part of the documents that you're, uh, or sorry, the, the, the links that you're sharing with us, and also the one that indicates the fees to be fa uh, paid for purpose of uh, being able to reference back on. Then the next inquiry is how do I get mediation jobs assigned to me uh, through the NCIA? So Alex, how do I get the jobs? How do I get the mediation jobs assigned to me through the NCIA? So is it that uh, there's, a, there's a register? You did mention that uh, uh, the, the, the parties are the ones who choose. So that, that means that the parties could choose and choose and choose and choose the same people. Uh, is it, the, what is your experience? Is it that parties walk to you or is it their legal advisors who are the ones who are at the fore of their matter? Uh, what is your experience in this particular area, Alex? All right, thank you, Wangari. Uh, from my experience, basically, we've had uh, lawyers who know that the NCI does mediation. And so they have a, a, a case which has gone to court. It's been screened for mediation, and they are told you have to you know, go to mediation. And of course, most of those have been going to the judiciary you know, under the quota next mediation program. But there are lawyers also who are saying there's another institution which is mandated to do this, and they have systems that work and uh, fantastic places to have you know, those, these mediations held, and they refer the parties to us. So they come, they do for the, the application, and of course, once the application is complete, we then the next step is appointment of the mediator. And uh, this is done, is that we give them, these are the list of accredited mediators on our panel, and the parties are supposed to choose. They have a timeline to choose you know, to pick a mediator for appointment. And once these time timelines lapse, then the center directly just appoints from, again, the same, same panel. So, party autonomy, they're the ones who come and say, we would want so and so. And, uh, but again, from that very same experience, we found most parties are coming for mediation because in a dispute, they do not really, you know, trust the other person very much with the people they are proposing. So we'd have party A propose Alex Moniki. And party B uh, wants Edwin, all right? So right there, there's again, another sort of conflict. So once they're not able to agree, the center um, goes ahead and appoints the mediator. So ideally it's uh, through the parties, 
parties are the ones who choose. We give them that uh, leeway because it's a, you know they want to be the ones to uh, to have this control of the process. And if they're not able to agree, then the center uh, appoints. So what uh, I think I mentioned this during our last session, we are having uh, some sort of an MOU with the judiciary to then have X number of cases done at the center. And we, you know, under the NCA rules, we have people who have, in fact, we've been getting calls from most insurance companies doing business with government, and they are putting called a made up clause in their contracts. The made up means if there's a dispute, it first goes to mediation, and if the mediation bit doesn't work, then they move to arbitration. So um, the med the, that automatically then leads them to the center as a first uh, place of of dispute, um, you know, settlement. So there's a, a dispute has occurred. They, they had a contract, and the, what they have in their in their contract is either mediation clause under NCA rules, and that you will see when you get a chance to look at our rules you will see what the mediation clause is in the NCIA. So we've had parties who, uh, they have a dispute. In fact, they do not know how to go about it, but a dispute has occurred and their contract says if the dispute occurs, they have to go the first place of call is NCIA. So we receive those as, as a, on a first instance. There's no reference. It's just a it's an automatic process. Dispute has occurred. You then have to directly um, go straight to the NCIA. And once they come, then we, of course, tell them this is a panel of mediators and they, are, they have the liberty and every right to choose who is their mediator. And, but from my experience, it's the center that seems to be the one speaking, given that they do not seem to agree on, on one person. Mangari. Mangari? Wangari. Christine, your mic is off. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, there you go. Yeah, but we wait for Gary to come on. Yes. Oh, here she is. Here she comes. Ah. Yes, Wangari. <laughs> Welcome back, Wangari. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you, and uh, yeah, Christina, thank you for um, holding on that. And uh, it, it, it will allow me to make an inquiry uh, to, uh, to, to Alex. Uh, with regard to the center, uh, how much is, does one pay to be able to hire the rooms? And if one is assigned a case by the NCIA, so do you also pay for the rooms or the room is part of uh, the, sub, the, let me say, the part of the, uh, the, the, the job or the task that uh, is uh, from NCIA. Thank you. Alex? Okay, thank you, Wangari. And I'll share with you after, after this uh, session, uh, we do have a facilities brochure, which shows the, ch the charges that are, you know, of, of the rooms. And this is uh, on different, the charges come for different specs, uh, the, dependent on the number of people in the room, uh, what size of room that you want, and I'll be able to share this with the with, with the parties. As how much sub parties pay, uh, you know, for do they, do you have a case on the NCI, are you going to pay for the rooms? No. What happens is that once a case is filed at the center, the center earns an administrative cost. All right, and an, an administrative cost for mediation is to be advised by the center at the time of filing the request with a maximum of Kenya shillings ten thousand payable by the party initiating the mediation pursuant to, uh, should be rule 6.2e of the rules. So the details of all these costs that are involved in the mediation process, from what the mediator earns, from how much the party will then have to pay in terms of administrative costs, is contained in uh, our rules. So once you get a chance to look at that, you will, you will see how much you pay to register first. You know, your, your a case has come, it's an, it's an entrepreneurial fee of 1,000 Kenya shillings, payable again by the party initiating the petition pursuant to Rule 6.2. So Rule 6.2 basically uh, you know, tells the parties what they are required to do to register or to have their petition admitted, admitted at the NCIA. 
So if, if Wangari, for instance, is now a mediator in a case she's been given by the NCIA, and the good thing about the center existing is that they take care of all those issues of rooms and whatnot. We just want you to come and exercise your mind as a mediator. We will ask the parties to deposit uh, the, your fee in, in, a, in an account that we hold in trust of mediators and arbitrators. So that when you start the process, it's not, it's, it's, uh, there are no issues of payment, uh, mediators have not been paid. We make sure that by the time you're going to conclude, we have your money in, a, in, a, in an account which we hold in trust for our panelists. Wangari. Uh, thank you, that's uh, very clear. Uh, what are the tax implications? And uh, this is uh, two-way. When uh, clients are, uh, let me say, uh, uh, signing up for their mediation to be, uh, take, to be done at the NCIA, what is the tax implication? So that uh, is uh, 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 Lydia Muthanje has a mediation client and comes to the NCIA. What's the tax implication to the figures that are indicated there? And also, secondly, what's the tax implication to the the to the, uh, the, 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 the payment to the mediator uh, after concluding a mediation? Or yes, thank you. So ideally, uh, on, on the issues of the administrative costs that uh, or any other service that the center offers. Our services are not vertical, so there's no VAT. Uh, the amount of 10,000 shillings, if that's the administrative cost, will be 10,000 shillings. The amount for the mediator, ideally, of course, you, you've seen it's uh, an hourly, it's on a, an hourly basis. So you, you will then, at the end of the mediation, give us your, your, your fee note, which is basically saying that I, as this mediator, have taken X number of hours in this, in, in this dispute. So you will have a, a like a timesheet, yeah, and we have a, a template for that. So a timesheet where you then indicate the number of hours that you've done. So at the end, of course, you have to include VAT. So if I'm being paid at a rate of five thousand an hour, and I have spent uh, so many sessions that I've spent, say what, uh, thirty hours in this mediation, then it's thirty times five thousand, then plus VAT. And what the center then does when it's paying you, it withholds, I think it should be 5%, so you then uh, you will then pay, 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 pay the rest. So we do uh, request the mediators and arbitrators on our panel once they, since you, it's a very simple way of you know doing this. You're talking about the hours that you've done, if there are any incidentals in between, uh, of course you then itemize the incidentals. So your total fee is uh, X amount, then you add a VAT currently now at a rate of 14%. And once we're making the payment, the center withholds uh, about 4% of that, and then uh, 5, uh, 5%, and then you're supposed to then pay, remit the rest to, to KRA. Hungary? Um, that's, that's clear. That's uh, very clear. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, what's the, 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 the lead time for payment? Um, and uh, the reason for asking, making this inquiry is that um, a profession grows when uh, and is motivated to, to grow when it's actually uh, recognized uh, with the financial remuneration. It's timely. That sadly is not what we have seen in this country with regard to uh, the, the major panel that is um, currently in the country. Uh, so what is the lead time? And here, the reason we have this um, inquiry is that uh, it is an opportunity for the mediators who choose to get onto the panel to be able to understand what they are getting themselves um, into uh, so that we are not having now later that, oh, yes, I was expecting I finished today and, you know, the payment would have come two days before. What's something like the lead time from the um, experience? And then uh, we've understood, because we have understood from you that the clients are the ones who actually make pay for this service. Yeah. So for that first part, yes, kindly. Alex. All right, so payment, um, how long does it take? So number one, uh, and I, I, I like keeping referring back to the rules because then our rules are our guide. And some of these answers will be found in the rules. And ideally what happens is that we, the mediation process will not begin Number one, if parties have not paid, um, uh, you know, number one, of course, the commencement fee, the decision fee, the appointment fees, if any, and deposit the mediator's fee and administrative costs as uh, required by the center. 
So what our practice here is, is that uh, we've received a mediation today. Of course, the part, part initiating that process has paid the uh, decision fees. And uh, we then ask before, even these are, um, well, during the process of appointment of, of, of mediator, we then request them to do a deposit. So this deposit is uh, put in our account and you may not actually exhaust it. We're asking each party, uh, we need you to deposit 100,000 uh, to take care of this. And once towards the end, of course, since we are ad helping in the decision of the process, we are always in touch with the mediators to ask them whether, and, and we inform the mediators that we do have a deposit in this dispute of X amount. And since you know how many hours you put uh, into the process, you will then uh, keep you know, require them to make any further deposit. We will always do that. The, the point of, of all this is that we want, by the time the mediation process is ending, all the monies owed to the mediator are in our account. So that after the end of the mediation process, we do a final statement of accounts, uh, indicating how these deposits are going to be, to be utilized. And this you'll find in rule 23 of our mediation rules. So we keep asking parties for additional monies, uh, for the cost, and this is again, this Rule 23 and Rule 19, which are payable 15 days after the receipt of the request for additional deposits. So we keep asking parties deposits, So, but at the end of the process, the mediator is not now left wondering okay, well, how soon or when do I get my, my payment. So we make sure that the mediation process has ended and so have your payments, you know, have, have your payments been, been made. And from our practice, we find ourselves having to refund some of the monies to the parties. Because, and uh, allow me to use, just use figures, the entire cost for this mediation um, was 200,000. But we had asked the parties to each make a deposit of 150, which means there's an extra 100,000. So we have to kind of credit the accounts with the balance equally, all right? So from our practices that we always make sure that the deposits are not exactly, they're a little bit more, than what the mediator feels or thinks or how long this will take. So that we always then have to refund. It's easier to refund the parties than to keep asking them. The mediation process has ended. They've signed a settlement agreement. Now we're telling them we need to pay. You know, they will be, you know, they may be hesitant or they may take, you know, forever. And sometimes you have no control of that. So to counter that, we always make sure the deposits that are in the account for that particular case are sufficient to take care of the, the arbitrator, the mediator fee at any particular point in time. Yes, Wangari. Okay, uh, thank you, Alex. That's uh, very clear. Uh, uh, just uh, still on the area of uh, mediators uh, uh, and the mediation programs that are there. So from what you've talked, uh, that sounds more like the commercial mediation uh, context. And uh, at the same time, we would like to find out, does NCI manage or handle uh, government-related uh, mediations? And specifically when we ask that, so is that something that mediators would uh, expect to be something that they do, they, they would handle? Uh, Family-related and also community-related uh, re community uh, uh, mediation, mediation matters. So if you can kindly just run through that, and then now we can get into the context that was around the training. Thank you. All right, thank you, Wangari. Yes, we do. Um, uh, we, in fact, we've had uh, quite a number of mediations where you have two uh, government institutions. Uh, and of course, we all know who is the ad advisor of government. So they've written to the AG saying there's this uh, dispute and uh, they, would know, they would want to have it mediated. And I'm sure you guys have seen some uh, very controversial directives that were issued uh, asking you know, any government institution that has a case against another to withdraw that within X number of days, and also not engaging counsel for, you know, private counsel for, for government matters, which will then mean all these disputes that are being, that these institutions have, will have to one way or the other be resolved. Because withdrawing a uh, counsel, uh, we're telling government institutions that who have a dispute, a dispute with each other to withdraw those disputes or those cases, that does not resolve the dispute they had in the first place, which therefore mean there will have to be other mechanisms of having these disputes resolved. And mediation is one of them. And the good thing about the, the AG and the SG 
they have been very supportive of the, these processes. We've had instances where, um, you know, the AG has been, you know, letters have gone to the AG, two different government bodies, they, they want to, you know, take each other uh, to court. And the AG says, no, this one, take it to the NCIA, let it be mediated on. We don't want you guys, it's a government against government. Yeah. So they're saying, let's, let's promote more of mediation to try and resolve these disputes since you're all in any event under one big uh, umbrella of the government of Kenya. So yes, we do. We have family matters, we have commercial matters, we have pretty much any matter that can be mediated. And parties are at liberty to then come to us. Uh, no, we, no, with, in fact, the strangest thing is that there are parties who know we do mediation, but uh, they had no mediation clause, no, and it's a commercial matter. So what we then ask them to do, we request them to adopt our, our mediation clause after the, 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 the event, after the dispute has occurred. So we would want the parties to consent in writing that I, so-and-so, have had a dispute with so-and-so, and we'd want to take this mediation under the NCIA. And why we ask them to do this is because we don't want them, one, to start, and the other one is reluctant and saying, no, 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 me didn't consent to that you're on your own, I, then we do not achieve what it is that we are seeking to achieve to have uh, this dispute resolved. So we always encourage parties, if you come and you have no form of ADR um, um, clause or a mediation clause or an, a made up clause, we always uh, request them to, both parties of course, to agree to then, in, or rather to consent in writing that they would want this mediation done by NCIA, under NCIA using the NCIA rules. So we do have all manner of, in fact, um, those, we quite have we've had quite a number of commercial cases, but family uh, matters, government, uh, and a lot of government to government, government to private institutions, um, which then would mean there's work for, for mediators, pretty much from any field in, in which you fall or in which you prefer to practice. Ongari, your mic is off? Yes. Thank Sorry. you for that. Uh, thank you for that uh, clarification and uh, confirmation, Alex. Okay. Uh, colleagues, who, yes, colleagues who are on the call, uh, we would like to highlight to you that uh, you can be able to uh, uh, go through this particular presentation, plus also others that uh, we have uh, been able to run uh, during this season. They are available for you uh, on uh, YouTube, and you can be able to replay them so that you can get uh, clarification or clarification uh, once uh, this uh, session is over. And also uh, you will be able to find other valuable uh, resources also on uh, the Wasliana Navigators YouTube, which you can be able to use in your uh, free time and also for your uh, knowledge um, advancement. So um, Alex, I'd like to, for us to be able to now to proceed on to the aspect that related to, to training and we yeah. had a couple of inquiries. I will run through all of them just so that we can, we can bite them up uh, uh, at once because they are very uh, related. So does NCIA train mediators and when does it do that? Um, how do I enlist to be an NCIA trainer? So this is now the training of trainers and specify what the requirements are. Then also we have, uh, can our organization be approved to run NCIA trainings for mediators? So that would mean uh, a practitioner who has a mediation firm and they would uh, like to be able to run the trainings for clients they source for. Then also is NCIA training for mediators approved and it's approved by who? Then um, can we have the NCIA curriculum uh, for training? Then um, I am a mediator and was trained as a mediation trainer by another org organization. Can I join the NCIA uh, trainers? Uh, does NCIA approve the curriculum for other organizations? And for example, uh, which one? then is training on online mediation now offered to the uh, to the panel members to uh, people who are now who get onto the NCIA panel do they get training uh, from NCIA uh, on online mediation and tied to that also is also the question on capacity building what is the capacity building programs for the, the mediators who are on the NCIA panel so Alex I know you have a, a schedule of uh, the NCIA trainings you may choose to screen it or uh, take us through that as you're giving the responses. Okay. Thank uh, you thank for the you, training thank calendar. 
All right, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Wangari. Yes, NCIA trains. In fact, uh, one of our functions under Section 5 of the NCIA Act, and this is specifically Section 5M, uh, is that uh, the functions of the center shall be two, and M says, provide training and accreditation for mediators and arbitrators. So the statute mandates us to train and accredit mediators and arbitrators. So, uh, and of course, now that we all know when the NCI came in place, there's been a lot of uh, now housekeeping, putting systems in place, policies that will guide the process of the, you know, of, 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 of all these from administration of cases and training. And just recently we came up with a training curriculum, which uh, was approved recently, and we have a training calendar. So what I've shared um, on, on the chart, actually that's an old calendar, it was intended to, and you'll see from the date, it was supposed to start training in March. In fact, it's the week that the flights, I think just the, the flights were now canceled. You could not travel out of the, out of uh, out of uh, Nairobi, and um, you know, of course, large gatherings were again you no know, prohibited. So COVID nineteen. So we didn't start training in March because then COVID disrupted the training training for med, for mediators the way we know it. You know, ha having to sit in a classroom engaging a tutor and you have, you know, you're able to interact, you know, very well. So what I've shared with you and on WhatsApp, and I hope you're able to circulate uh, in your WhatsApp group, is now the current training calendar. And this is for, we are, of course now, given that we are now readjusting or reshaping to the, this new normal, this will be done virtually. So now training done virtually, and this will be done um, for, for people who've not been trained before, people who want to advance their meditation training. And uh, after we, we roll this out, we will then have a, a CPD program, like, you know, a, a continuous uh, training program for people or mediators on our panel, so that then you need to continue uh, enriching your knowledge and uh, familiarizing yourself with the emerging issues in the practice of, of mediation. So yes, we do have a, a, that, that coming up. So we start the training first, then the CPD, for those who have been trained and for mediators on our panel, we will be rolled out as the second phase of training. So how do you, and then at least as an NCA trainer, uh, we initially, must have been late last year, yeah, late or mid last year, we did a request for trainers. We received some, and uh, since now is when we began, that uh, application is open. And it's not as technical as what we are talking about now for someone who's doing the conduct of mediation. There's no application form. You just write to the CEO of the center. You, of course, now that has a cover letter. And you, of course, indicate, you, you know, um, a profile or a resume, which then shows your training experience. So you're a trainer in such and such a place. You've been trained to train. And you'd be happy to come and train at the center. And we will put you on the panel of trainers. Because then we, this will be applicable to, so whenever we need people to be trained and, and we get anyone from the list of trainers to, to do the training. So can our organization be approved to run NCA trainings for mediators? Uh, we do, don't, have, don't have any uh, policy on this, but uh, Wangari would recall and any member here who was involved in the development of the, the ADR policy that went to, to you know, for national validation, there was a proposal for NCIA to approve curriculum for other organizations. Yeah, so it's still at a, at a proposal stage, but we do not have that as a, you know, no, NCA does not approve the curriculums for other organizations, and we also do not have organizations which uh, run NCA trainings for mediators. Since this is the beginning of training, we first want to roll it out and run it first before we can then engage other organizations that may be interested in uh, training on behalf of NCIA. So is NCA training for mediators approved? Yes, it's approved and it's approved by the board. The board has the mandate under the act uh, to approve um, the, um, the NCA training. Now that the, the act gives the center the power and function to provide training and accreditation. And the board is the overall, um, you know, the board of directors, the, the overall head in terms of policy and, and decisions like this containing the act. So there's someone else who asked, uh, is a mediator and was trained as a, med a mediation trainer by another organization, can they join NCA trainers? Absolutely, by all means, 
throw in your application, we'll be happy to consider that. And we'll be happy to have you on the panel of trainers. Does NCIA approve the, uh, I think we talked about that, is training an online magician, an online magician now offered to panel members. Uh, I think Wangari just mentioned this. We've now gone to online training and uh, we, uh, the, what would be offered to panel members is more of CPD because panel members are deemed to have been trained, the basic training. And if you look at the calendar, this is really the basic introduction uh, training first and the 40 hour uh, program for mediators. So I think uh, that's all from the list, Wangari. as we are getting to uh, to round up uh, with this uh, particular discussion uh, we, we 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 as i be when we were starting off it was very clear that we have quite a number of uh, mediators who have just um, started off uh, could they outrightly make an application uh, with uh, requests for mentorship and when i say this also together with young mediators even as you're uh, sorting out the program because Time is of essence, of essence uh, for, for their yes for their for their for their career in uh, in, in in mediation, and uh, I, I truly 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 believe that uh, there is a great need in this area and a great opportunity. So could they actually make an application with a request for mentorship, mentorship. so that they can either be able to sit in sessions? or they I mean to comediate, or they can actually just sit in sessions as they do advance on um, their, their learning. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Wangari. Uh, in, indeed, that would even hasten the process of having this program uh, ready. The, so the more applications you receive, then you the need is there. Because what, uh, us coming up with that program, emanated from our department by getting applications, someone coming to say, I know I can't be on your panel, but I really want to, to learn how to, to do this. I've been trained. I really just want to put my head in there and see what happens in mediation training. And it's those few applications that we received and they are, they are on a database somewhere in our office that um, necessitated the, the development of this uh, mentorship program. And we've then, so if you have people who, and I'm sure you do have quite a number of people who then fit in that program, would be happy to receive that. So we then hasten, the process of uh, final, finalization, rather, of the mentorship program. So as soon as they are, it's, it's ready and approved, we then uh, roll it out for them to be able to, of course, have um, a one-on-one -on -one, uh, practical uh, experience in mediation. Uh, thank you for that. So that means uh, colleagues who are on the call, and that is uh, your, your inquiry. I think what you're being told is, you're the one to make the haste so that then the sun can shine, um, can shine, can shine on uh, for, uh, to, uh, for you. Uh, we are getting on to the closing, and as we get on to the closing, I would like to highlight to uh, colleagues who are on the call that uh, we have our next session on uh, Thursday uh, of this week, and our next session is, uh, part, is, is actually the climax of our celebration of uh, our mediating council month. In the month of July, we, there is our celebration for mediating council, and we will be hosting uh, Dr. Francis Nja Karioki, who's a lecturer at Strathmore University uh, Law School, and uh, he will be taking us through uh, certain uh, areas that are, are related to uh, if you are a mediating council. And here, when we say you are a mediating council, yes, we mean if you are in the legal profession and mediation is uh, one of the uh, services uh, you are offering. Or on the second, uh, um, or on the other hand, it could be that you, when you are invited in for a mediation, then how do you handle it? What do you require to prepare for? And uh, uh, at the same time, also Dr. Karioki will also um, touch on the elements that relate to the mediation bill uh, that uh, has been circulating or is proposed. What the mediation bill actually mean for you, who is a mediating council? So we are looking forward uh, to have uh, each and every one of you to uh, to 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 join in uh, the call that, that will actually be on um, on Thursday when we will be hosting uh, Dr. Karyuki, and uh, we do hope that it will be of uh, greater uh, greater value. Uh, so, Alex, in uh, conclusion, would you have uh, any uh, other words for us as we get? Yes. So would you have wise words? Would you have wise words 
this is your golden <laughs> opportunity for your words of wisdom. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Please. So for me, Ongari, thank you very much, and I'm um, uh, for that. And uh, for me, it really is to 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 thank all of you. I mean, to just thank you for participating and showing interest in uh, in the future of dispute resolution. Mediation is the future. ADR is the future of dispute resolution. We actually want to get to a point where Wangari, and uh, we are basically now saying that litigation and going to court is ADR. That's the alternative. Because uh, mediation and arbitration should be the preferred uh, way or the preferred choice of dispute resolution. And if you can't, then settle your disputes through that preferred uh, way. The alternative will be going to, going to court. Okay. And, uh, and as we all know as mediators is that mediation has existed from time immemorial before we came up with these formalities of resolving dispute, whether it's uh, through litigation or arbitration, people would sit and you'd have one person try and, you know, um, make people just you know, stop fighting. And that's a form of mediation, you know, you're facilitating two people who seem to be in disagreement and letting them come together to a, a conclusion that they are both happy with. So I'm happy that the interest that you, you've all gained, I'm happy that people have um, made uh, the solemn decision to join the SCA panel and I can assure them that there will to be a decision that they are going to, they will not regret making that decision. I'm happy that we've, uh, we've gained a lot of interest even in mentorship. Uh, we have to train and prepare for the future. So we want to mentor as many as we can to be able then to fit in the shoes of, um, of those who exit uh, the profession. So that was all from me. And i will be happy again when Gary when called upon to do this again. And I like how interactive the session is. It, it's interesting when you make a presentation and there are questions you know, coming in, it makes you feel that people are listening and they, were, they are interested in which, that which that you're saying. Thank you for the much feedback. I can see um, uh, messages from um, quite a number of you. I'm grateful, and I look forward to interacting with you again. Okay. Thank you, Angari. Okay. Right. So, so Karim Sana, yes, I see from uh, Margaret Gatia. Thank you, Alex, for the very enlightening presentation. Uh, Margaret Gatia, I'm sure Alex is looking forward to receive your presentation and also assign you jobs very soon. Um, Edwin Apacha, we are happy to have you um, on the call. And uh, Edwin, you will allow me to kindly invite you to speak on behalf of uh, the colleagues who are on the call. You are one of the uh, colleagues who actually spoke uh, earlier. So I'd like to request that uh, you can kindly uh, speak uh, uh, on behalf of colleagues who are on the call. Um, Edwin Apacha, you kindly can tell us uh, what you have uh, learned, what you have discovered today. Edwin? Okay, Edwin? Hi again, everybody. Yes, hi. Uh, I've spoken about uh, what I do. I said I'm a court annex mediator. I do private mediation and also uh, court annex mediation. Yes. And this has been a very enlightening uh, presentation by Buana Alex. Of course, I've met him in another forum when we were trying to come up with that mediation bill or participate or give our views. Yes. So he's not a stranger to me. <laughs> um, more especially for the people who are talking about mentorship, probably I think they can reach out to those of us who have at least been in the trade for about a year or two years. We'll be more than glad to offer mentorship to them through stay, allowing them to sit in in some of our private mediations. I know there's still an issue with judiciary allowing other parties to sit in, in uh, uh, during mediation sessions. They are more than welcome to approach us and we'll help where we can. And we can also, through some, 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 some mentorship program, allow them to participate in more role plays. You see when people do more role plays, they gain more experience in terms of having a feel what the real thing looks like or feels like. Okay? All right. Good. All right. What else do you want me to address? Yes. <laughs> the, you, you've covered it all. Thank you so much for uh, offering that um, on, on, our, on our behalf. And uh, Alex, once again, uh, we would really like to thank you for uh, spending this uh, time with us. And the reason why would, uh, we are saying we would like to uh, really thank you uh, for spending this time with us is because um, the Nairobi Center for International Arbitration is, 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 uh, is, is in one of the iconic buildings um, in Nairobi. And um, for mediators, uh, this is an institution they hear of, or the, that is the, if they actually get to hear about it. 
uh, we have not had um, a lot of engagement with NCIA until they are about when uh, there was um, the ongoings with regard to the, um, the ADR policy. Uh, at this particular juncture, we have a mediation bill that has been presented or uh, has come out from Parliament. Uh, uh, and uh, for mediators, uh, quite a number of mediators, it is a surprise to them. So that ability for us to connect in this work will actually make uh, the difference. So mediators, uh, the call is now back to mediators. Uh, the reason we've been hosting these sessions is so that we can be able to have mediators enlightened uh, in preparation uh, to submit your applications uh, on Friday, the 31st of July, that is uh, in uh, this particular month. And uh, just for your information, we did learn that uh, the NCIA uh, board uh, will actually be sitting on, uh, in, in August, in mid-August, and that is when they will be going through the applications. And that is why we, are, we put out uh, that this is an opportunity for you to submit so that then you can have the consideration. To submit your application is download the application form, which is uh, on the NCIA website, that is ncia.or.ke. And uh, yeah, you will be required to uh, put in your, 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 your fee of 2,000 shillings with the application. And so that means that on Friday on 31st, that your application with the fee plus the photo and any other required attaching documents should be at NCIA. So colleagues, if you require uh, any further information uh, from our end, uh, uh, you may be able to send an email to Wasilian Hub and uh, especially if you're not on the Kenya Mediators WhatsApp group, please send an email uh, to Wasilian Hub, then you can be added um, onto the Kenya Mediators WhatsApp group, then you will be able to receive the communications much faster and uh, also much sooner. So Alex, I thank you once again for uh, spending time with us. Um, and uh, uh, we, we, as we will be calling on you again and again uh, uh, very soon. We are looking forward to hear in the month of uh, August, September, uh, how many mediators have actually got on board. And we are saying this because um, the empanelment series that we are doing is that we are looking at which panels exist locally, which panels exist internationally and just actually choose um, to be on board them. So ladies and gentlemen, in closing our session, we will uh, say the national anthem, the second stanza of our Wimbo wa Taifa, and then we can be able to close. I'm Kenny Nduguzetu, Tufanya Sote Bidi, Nasi Tujitoe Kwanguvu, Nchietu Ya Kenya, Tunayo Ipenda, to wet a yari, Quilinda. Quilinda. Looks like Wangari has disappeared again. Since she has made you the host. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it appears. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're back. She's back. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wangari? She seems to be having issues somewhere. Oh, must, I, must. Uh, Alex, I am right here with you. And yes, Excellent. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> yes. So you have a good evening, uh, everyone. And it was a pleasure. God bless you. And thank you, Alex, for also holding forth. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Yes, Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening.
Yeah, once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for uh, this session hosted in July 21st, 2020 with the Nairobi Center for International Arbitration, that is the NCIA. The NCIA can be found on the website ncia.or.ke. Our session today was on empanelment, and today we were looking at how the Nairobi Center for International Arbitration Mediators Panel runs, how to make an application, and also how to be able to get assignment of work on the panel. We look forward to our next session with you.